All right. Um, we're going to look right in some scripture here this evening. I want to say, uh, um, glad to all of you that are visitors with us. These young ladies way back yonder in the back, raise your hand back there, sister. I ain't seen them in a long time. They showed up this morning and came again tonight. Appreciate them being here. And um, uh, also this young man right here from over in Lenore, you got to watch him. I asked him, I said, did you come by yourself tonight? Because you usually got them guys. He said, no, I brought Jesus with me. I said, That's the right answer. <laughs> you don't never go nowhere by yourself if you're saved. And then this uh, young man right over here, glad, right your hand over, I'm glad to have this brother with us tonight also. Uh, but anyway, if there's anybody else visiting tonight, we're glad that you're here too. You make yourself at home. I want to look uh, just in the scripture just a second. And then George, uh, back there, uh, Hey, they, they're not, this ain't the first time they've come. They've come a lot in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I haven't asked, don't want to put you on the spot. Stand up there and introduce yourself to their family for the ones that don't know you, brother. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. We sure are glad they're here tonight also. I'm over in Glen Alpine. Amen. Lord bless you for coming. All right. I want to give you a little truth tonight. Take your Bible and turn to Psalm 51. Normally, when a preacher when a preacher says um, turn to Psalm fifty one, it's like automatic. Everybody thinks, well, you know, we're going to hear a sermon on repentance and David's great prayer of repentance. But actually, I want to draw another truth out of that scripture this evening. Um, if you'll give me attention, really, really short tonight, Psalm fifty one, and um, this is David's prayer of repentance after he had. Uh, Really, really uh, messed up, messed his life up. Thank God he got back on track, amen. And God used him, he sat on the throne till the day he died. A lady told me one time, she said, now God never did use David after that. I thought, well, you, that's, I don't know what you've been reading, but it ain't the Bible. Uh, he sure did. And David, David uh, said, uh, he, he repented and asked God to forgive him. In all those verses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I want to look at verse 10. Amen. Look at verse 10. David said, create in me a clean heart, O God. Yeah. Boy, that's, that ought to be our prayer, yeah. my prayer. God, I just want a clean heart. You know, there ain't no way you're going to have a clean heart living in this generation unless you uh, stay in the word of God and pray, stay in church, listen to preaching. That's the only way. You are not going to live out there in the world, secular world, and keep a clean heart. It's impossible. There's too much dirt out there. But you can do it. Lord, create in me a clean, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. We all need that, a right spirit. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. There's just some Old Testament doctrine we'll study one of these days. David was thought the Lord was going to take the Holy Spirit from him. Whew. Ain't that something? And um, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Now, he's going to do all these things here. Give me a right heart, a right spirit. Help me to be straight. Clean me out. Work in me. Then look at verse 13. Then. When, when's the then? After he's done all that other stuff. Then will I teach transgressors thy way and sinners shall be converted unto thee. I want to preach on why sinners won't come to church. And a lot of times it's us. The old saying is, when Jonah got right, Nineveh did. When Jonah got right, Nineveh did. Nineveh didn't get right to Jonah did. And sinners don't get saved till the church gets right. Church starts getting right and on fire for God, sinners will be saved. That's why we talk about revival. The revival that I got saved in, there's a bunch of people got right with God. And when you get a bunch of people get right with God, it clears out a spot in the jungle of sin and the Lord comes down and sinners are converted. We ought to thank God uh, for our church. We've had sinners saved. We had that young, young lady saved here a couple of Sundays ago. We have kids saved just about every week back there in junior church. And we ought to thank the Lord for that. But in general, in general, church attendance is at an all-time low in most major cities, especially of those that are not saved. Over in Sweden tonight, 95% 
of the people uh, are some, claim some kind of religion and 3% go to church in Sweden. There's something very rotten in Sweden. I'm gonna show you some stuff that's going on in Sweden here in the next few weeks. Did you know in Sweden right now tonight, they are thousands of people being microchipped, uh, volunteering, paying, I think it's $180. You pay to be microchipped. All of your information is in that chip in your hand and you do business with it. I'm not saying that is the mark of the beast. I am saying it sure is a step in that direction. And it may wind up being, I don't know. But I'm telling you one thing, brother, uh, something rotten in Sweden. And it happens in Sweden, then it jumps over to California and works its way back to us. We get it last, thank God. Uh, but that's the way things work. And because of that, uh, many people in Sweden tonight don't even believe in God. Get me down just one hair, please. And I want to give you just a few reasons why sinners don't go to church. I, I go to churches all the time. I, I preach revivals. Uh, when you can stay there Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night. And the preacher will say, well, it's about all home folk tonight. And the next night, well, it's all home folk tonight. And I, and I don't know anybody, everybody here is saved. And uh, it's, it's discouraging. You don't see many people that are not saved going to church. And be, so for that cause, the evangelist tries to convince all the Christians that they're not saved and get some of them recapped so he can go tell everybody uh, that some people got saved. That's a dangerous thing to do. Uh, tonight, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna be honest and say why sinners won't go to church. Number one, sinners don't go to church because of the church's lack of power in services. Nothing will draw sinners into church like power, old-fashioned power. In Acts chapter two and verse one, when Peter and them come out there and preach, buddy, I'm telling you, they've had power. Uh, the Holy Ghost was poured out on them the power of God fell and sinners were converted. I'll guarantee you one thing, uh, if a neighborhood, any, any church, any church, it don't have to be a big, beautiful building. It don't have to be a famous, educated pastor. It don't have to be a well-known, hot shot singing group. It don't have to be uh, uh, some fancy program. It don't have, you don't have to have that. You let a bunch of people thoroughly get right with God. I mean completely right with God and seek God's faith and pray and lay on the altar and beg God. So I'll guarantee you one thing. It won't be long till the doors will be swinging open. The old story is, I uh, said there's a little old country church up on top of the hill and they said everybody in that little town was carrying buckets of water up there to put the fire out. And it just so happened that the church deacon and the town atheist was running side by side. And they were both running up that hill with their bucket of water, going to throw it on that fire. And the, and the atheist looked, or uh, the deacon looked over to the atheist and jokingly said, uh, first time I've ever seen you run into church. And the atheist looked back and said, first time I've ever seen the church on fire. Amen, amen, that's the truth, that's the truth, that's the truth, buddy. If a church gets on fire, you'll be able to see them come running in. That's what got me in. You know, I didn't even know who the preacher was when I got saved. I didn't go because of a big crusade. I didn't go because there was no famous singing group. There was no big bus out there as long as this building. I'm not saying them things are all bad. I'm just saying if God's people called by his name will humble themselves and pray and seek God's face, there's no telling what God is. And let me say this, God Almighty still saves in the old fashioned way just like he always did. Somehow or another, we got it in our head that uh, the Lord don't save people like he did me and you. Uh, you don't see people weeping at the altar and their life change. Oh, you don't see it like that much anymore, preacher. Well, maybe you don't, but that don't mean that the fault ain't with God. The fault ain't with God. Brother, he'd save everybody in Burke County if they'd turn to him and repent and call upon the Lord. You know what the Bible said about the church of the last days in Revelation 3? He said, you say I am rich and increased with goods and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Lord, what a description. 
I'm talking about, here's a big church. I'm not saying these things are wrong. I'm, I wish we had a big building sitting right out there. We need it. Not just for show, we need it. I wish there was one sitting right out there. Maybe there will be one day. And you know what? Uh, if a church got this big old building and they have this activity center and this uh, uh, conference center and this uh, uh, kitchen and this over here is for wedding receptions and, and downstairs and hundred Sunday school classes and all that, and it's absolutely dead as four o'clock. I'm telling you, this, ladies and gentlemen, this evening, uh, uh, they said, yeah, you're rich and increased with goods and don't even realize that you're wretched, poor, miserable, blind, and naked. I want to say because of the church's lack of power. Number two, I'd like to say this evening, why sinners don't come to church? Sinners don't come to church because of church members who are in the way. Church members who are in the way. Jesus described these people in Matthew 23, 13 when he said, uh, you Pharisees and lying, he said, he said, you don't enter in and you hinder them that are entering in. In other words, it'd be like if everybody out here, uh, everybody in here tonight was out there in the parking lot and everybody was trying to get in and, he, and you had these two or three people standing right here, got the door blocked like this for the, so that they can't get in. Jesus said, you don't go in and you don't let nobody else in. That's exactly what's going on in a lot of churches tonight. You got some people that have got it blocked up. Lord, I've been up there in them little old mountain churches and everybody's kin to everybody. They got 40 people and 40 years ago they had 40 people and they're all kin to each other. I've, I've seen some of them little old churches got 50 people and seven deacons. Seven deacons and 50 people. Lord have mercy. I'm telling you what. And they're, and they're all akin to each other. And buddy, you know what? Blood's uh, thicker than water. You know that, right? And buddy, when something comes up, all that family sticks together and they're ready to run that preacher off and get them another one. Uh, they say, uh, we'll get rid of you. We'll get rid of you. And do them like that. They won't get in. And they got the door blocked so nobody else won't get in. I've actually heard of them saying, uh, I, I, I know of a church, uh, a good Southern Baptist church, I mean decent, uh, good people in it, they were decent people, but they were a little bit on the dry, upshotty side, kind of like fancy, you know, well-to-do people, and a revival broke out. And there's people getting saved right and left, and kids bringing, I mean, their friends, every size, shape, every color, everything. I mean, and that's what it always happens when you have a revival. God's no respecter of persons when you have a revival like everybody can come in and get saved. Uh, people don't even speak the same language we do. We had people here this morning didn't speak English. I don't know. I don't know how she got it, but I hope she did, didn't she, Jennifer? I hope she did. <laughs> Amen. But I'm telling you something, brother. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, they come in, they started getting saved, and one of the leaders in the church said, I'm not going to stand here and let these people turn our first Baptist church into a Pentecostal. So no, he thought that because they was crying and, and hugging necks and everything, he was turning Pentecostal. I mean, uh, that old boy could probably use a little Pentecostal dose. Amen. He could have probably, it wouldn't have hurt him to have a little bit of emotion and some tears and some cry. Let me tell you something, people. There ain't nothing wrong with crying in church. There's nothing wrong with laughing in church if you're crying and laughing about the right thing. There's nothing wrong with being emotional. God gave us these emotions. God gave us our emotions. The light to be able to laugh, to be able to cry. I'd hate to go to a church where they thought you couldn't laugh or you couldn't cry or you couldn't shed no tears or you couldn't weep and bring your burden to the Lord and leave them there and hug neck and get up and go back and sit down and weep and wipe the tears. I'd hate to go to a church like that. Church members in the way. Or they can cuss and bless in the same sentence. Amen. That's right, brother. They can blow hot air and cold air at the same breath. Brethren, these things ought not so to be, the Lord said. But I'm going to tell you that's church members in the way. Number three, number three, I want to say this. You know why sinners don't come to church? There's no spirit drawing power out in the community. Uh, the Bible said they have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. John 6, 44, you all know the verse where the Lord said, no man can come to me except my Father 
draw him. There, I, I, I'm, I am not uh, that way at all. I, I don't, I don't believe in easy believism, but I sure don't believe in hard believism. I believe you can come to the Lord and He'll save you. But I'm not, I'm not crazy either. A person that's not under conviction ain't going to do much business with God. There's got to be some kind of conviction. And you know what brings people under conviction? People get right with God, the power of God fall, and you start seeing your sins. Listen, I've known people that argued with you. I don't see nothing wrong with this. I don't see nothing wrong with this. I don't, we're living together. We're not married, but I don't see nothing wrong with it. I drink a little bit, but I don't see nothing wrong with it. I don't, and buddy, the power of God hit in the service, and people say, all of a sudden, they're down there praying, I see something wrong with it now. That, that conviction, conviction, brother, and our generation is short on Holy Ghost Bible conviction. Lord have mercy. There was a time when people felt guilty when they do something wrong. There was a time when you, if you done something wrong, you'd hang your head in shame. Now they're not ashamed of it. Now they'll brag about it. Uh, now, Lord, they'll, they'll be coming together and say, hey, uh, this is my boyfriend. He just moved in with me and, and we're this and we're that right in the house of God. I'm telling you, there's no spirit drawing power in, the, in our community. I'm telling you tonight, Holy Ghost, conviction, the spirit lifts the cloud and the fog off your eyes and you see clearly and you see what's wrong. Amen. Do you know the closer you get to the Lord, the more stuff you believe that's wrong. That's you know, I always know when I'm getting backslid, when I do something, I thought, you know what, I used to think that was wrong. Oh, and then I'm like you, I think, well, I've matured. <laughs> you ain't matured, you backslid. Amen. You ain't matured. You backslid. If it's wrong to tell a little lie a long time ago, it's still wrong. Tell a little lie now. If it's wrong to watch a dirty movie 20 years ago, it's wrong to watch a dirty movie now. I'm talking about the old dirty Halloween movies some of y'all watched this week. Listen, they put just enough wickedness, lust of the flesh in them things to make you feel perverted and full of lust. You'll be so full of lust you don't know whether you're coming or going. You think you want to see Freddie cut somebody's head off, but it's full of lust and make you lust after everybody at work the next day. That was not in the message. I just throwed that in there for free. It's my birthday. Number four. I'll tell you another reason why people don't come to church. Because there's too many Christians trying to do the work of God in the flesh. Amen. Not led by the Spirit. Life is not clean within. All this uh, uh, stuff about, about having it all programmed out before we get here, like I mentioned a while ago. We ought to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You can't do the work of God in the flesh. Cannot be done. It, now, now, please understand me. I, I'm not, I don't get weird. I don't, I don't uh, see, you know, see things floating around in here or nothing like that. I have seen people done that. I was in a meeting over in Asheville one time and, and the preacher got up and he, <laughs> he's one of these, uh, some, he's a church of God evangelist and his hair was real long back here. He was one of them guys, he'd, he'd preach a little bit and the organ, and the Bible said, and the Bible said, and you got your emotions going. I'm not saying that's all wrong, but it, it does mess with your emotion. And he'd grab out a comb about that long, go, his hair looked like Elvis, man. It was that long, greasy, and he'd just, put, he'd just comb that hair back like that. He said, I see a big demon right over this section, right over here. And it's close to where us boys are sitting. I said, uh oh, he knows that we think he's ain't right. About that time somebody run up here, that organ music got louder, the drums started playing harder, somebody hit the altar, he grabbed a pack of cigarettes out of their pocket, slung them back yonder across the church. And I went, whoa, man, get hurt in here. Uh, I, and uh, uh, it's like cigarettes slap you upside the head and all that, and it, it, honestly, it got a little weird in there. I, I tried not to judge. I tried to think, well, you know, uh, you know. Uh, but it got a little weird, a little weird. And, uh, and, and I, have seen, I have seen others try. I've seen preachers just beat people to death and beat them to death. And the harder they preach, the, it, the worse it got. Uh, the dead, if a preacher preaches on the very same sins every single Sunday, it just makes people harder and harder and harder and harder and deader and deader 
and deader and harder and deader and harder. Christians trying to do the work of God in the flesh. We need to, we need to pray. We, Sunday school teachers need to pray. We not only need to study, we need to pray. Lord, lead me. Give me the right spirit. Let the right spirit be on me and come out of me while I'm talking. Number five, I'll say this quickly tonight. We're moving quickly. I want to say this. You know why people won't come to church? Sinners are busy. People are really, really busy. Have you noticed how busy the devil's got everybody nowadays? I'm telling you, they begin to make excuse. They have yard work. They have social events. We have cars supposed to shorten our time instead of ride a horse or walk. Cars invented, now you can drive 10 miles in eight minutes. If you go 70, go 80, you can drive 10 miles in about seven and a half minutes, something like uh, right at 88 minutes, and uh, that's moving. And yet, it seems like we have a microwave oven, put it in our hunt. We don't have to wait on the car to warm up. Start it, go. Flip a button, the heat comes on. Flip a button, air conditioning comes on. Open the door, the freezer, ice in the freezer. We don't have to go down to the creek. Don't have to go out to the outhouse to use the bathroom. Don't have to go down to the creek to take a bath like people used to. And it still seems like we don't have time to go to church or read our Bibles and pray. Now, I'll tell you what's happened. The devil has took up our time with stuff. TV, games, Ball game, team, all that stuff. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm really not saying all that. But Lord, we're got, people are so busy. Go out and try to get somebody to come to church. They say, well, now my, my son, uh, well, he goes to travel ball on the weekend, so we can't come. I work every other weekend, so I can't come. This one, we go see here on the course, so I can't come. This one here, so I can't come. I go see grandma every Sunday, so I can't come. I mean, the devil's got people so busy, they can't come to church. I mean, it is so busy, it is ridiculous. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, they can't, they can't stay, they can't uh, stay uh, because they're so, uh, they're so tied up. Got to go here, got to go there, got to be there, got to be here, got to be there. We don't have time to let God speak to us anymore. Number five. Number five. Sinners' eyes are blinded. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3, thus that is our gospel be hid. It is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the mind. You know, it's bad to have blind eyes. It's really bad to have blind mind. A blind mind means you can't think clearly. That's why people believe in evolution. That's why people believe in, uh, in atheism. There is no God and things like that. They are, minds are blinded. The devil knows if he can keep you from coming to church that you won't hear the gospel and you won't be under conviction if those people only knew that the best times you'll ever have in your life or when you're in church, saved and right with God. I, I preached on heaven last Sunday night in Florida. And uh, the last Sunday of the, of the, the last night of the revival, I preached on Sunday. And it got real to me. And it got real in there and people was crying. And God, God started blessing. And you know, I, I got to thinking about that. And I said this. I said, people... They laugh at it. People drive up and down the road and say, what's wrong with them crazy people? But the closest thing you'll ever have to heaven on this earth, the closest you'll have to heaven on this earth, now you, can, you can include Hollywood, Las Vegas, cruise ships, air, airplane, you can, uh, steak dinner. The closest thing you'll ever have to heaven on this earth is being in a, a real camp meeting atmosphere where the Spirit of God's in there and everything's just light and your sins are forgiven and everybody's happy, there ain't nothing like that. This world ain't got nothing to offer like that. They ain't no drug, they ain't no alcohol, they ain't nothing in this world, this blessed world that can compare with church when it's real. When it's real, it's the best thing in the whole wide world. It's a little bit of heaven before we get to heaven. But they can't see that. They can't see that. They think, why would I want to get dressed Go in there and sit on them seats and let somebody scream and holler at me. Their minds are blind. They ain't seeing what you see. Amen. Lastly, and I'm done. Number seven, the spirit of the age we're living in discourages people from coming to church. 
We're living in a time when there's seducing spirit flooded over this nation. The Bible said there'll be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Have you noticed that television never paints a church in a good light? I don't watch regular TV like ABC, NBC. I don't, I just, there's nothing there that really appeals to me. And I, uh, once in a while, I'll see something that catches my eye, and, and especially if it's got UFOs in it or something. I'll say, I just wonder what they're saying. Anything that's fulfilled Bible prophecy. And, uh, but that stuff don't tempt me. But when's the last time, when's the last time you saw a TV show on, 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 on primetime TV, NBC, ABC, that painted the church in a good light and somebody went and got saved and it changed their life and the whole family got in church? You ain't seen one like that. When's the last time you've seen a romantic scene between a man and a woman and it really got, and they were married? You don't, you won't see that. Hollywood portrays the only thing that's romantic is adultery. And that's how it deceives you. When you watch movies that's got people taking their clothes off, and yet it's presenting a false picture to you that don't really exist in real life. That ain't reality, people. That's a trick of the devil to mess your mind up. Amen. In real life, her breath stinks. The spirit of this age. As a young man went to Alder one night in a church one morning, great big Baptist church, and a young man, teenage boy, jumped up and went down to the altar. When that boy went to the altar, there were several people in that congregation that had thoughts. Here's what they were. A businessman saw him at the altar and said, I wonder now, will he work an honest day for me? His Sunday school teacher saw him and said, I wonder now if he'll listen better in class and try to apply himself. There was a girl saw him go down there and say, I wonder now, if he'll act like a gentleman out on a date instead of what I've heard about him. His mother looked down and said, I wonder if this will way he affects the way he'll act at home. If it don't, he didn't get the right, right spirit. You know why sinners won't come to church? Because they look at us church people and say, well, I, you ain't no better than I am. And a lot of times you're worse. Why would I want to go to church? David said, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. I don't want to be a stumbling block to somebody else. Lord knows we've done it enough. Yes, sir. Let's make up our mind. We ain't going to stand and block the door. We'll move so others can come in. Let's stand by his prayer.